I am back with very interesting topic today. This is all about social engineering, how this attack can be executed and believe it or not, this is one of the easiest and sophisticated attack as well for the, most of the users in the market. You can easily execute it, you can easily hack someone's username and password and get unauthorized access into the network, but don't try to do it, it's illegal. So for knowledge purposes, we will try to look into what is social engineering, how this social engineering impacts the normal user, what are different types of social engineering like phishing, spear phishing, whaling, waterfalling and we will also look into what is user awareness, training and what kind of physical access control solutions you can deploy in the market and how you can secure the physical premises in the environment. Let's try to understand first what is social engineering is. Social engineering comes in multiple variations. You can trick someone to do the action what you want. For example, you can call someone and pretend to be someone else. Or you can send him the email and ask him to provide his credentials or ask him to send you any unauthorized data. So there are multiple ways to do the social engineering. When it comes to the terminologies, most of the attacks are same. It all falls under social engineering. But the audience targeted in these attacks is different. For example, when it comes to the phishing, it is targeted on general public. You will be sending randomly everywhere and you will be expecting someone clicks on that email and gives you what you want. For example, you send me an email saying, Hi, I'm from Google. Your password is going to expire. You have to update it. Click here to update it. This is what you are trying to capture my credentials, this is part of social engineering. You are trying to trick me to click that link, go to the form, fill that information, and you have the legitimate information. That information you can use it to log in, change it, or send more emails to my contacts. Think they will be considering that it's coming from me and it will give more credibility on that email. So this is the way how social engineering happens. And another example is you can look into my friend list and try to pretend one of them. And you will notice that how many people fall into it because they are trusting them. They will be expecting some messages from them. Once you tell them that, let's say, I am Vikas. So most of the people, when they know me, they will try to reply back. This is the part of social engineering. What is phishing? Phishing is when you're using email as a medium to deliver your message to any person to do any kind of click or retract or send you any information. This is all targeted on general public and you are randomly selecting the targets here and there. But you are trying to make the email look as legitimate as possible so that it does not raise the alarm in my mind. And you will not believe that this is the easiest way to enter into any company. If you think about it, what is the other ways you can directly enter into the company? People are the weakest link in the cybersecurity. We will be covering in CEH how to execute these attacks and we will try to demonstrate it. But please don't try to do it without others' permission. If you want to test these things, test it in the sandbox environment. Don't try to do it on the actual people. This is illegal and you can be jailed for a long time. So don't do these things. The first tip I want to give it here, don't try to be helpful for others. Don't try to extend your support to unknown people. This will be causing you big trouble and it will be giving the way for someone to come into the network. Let's look into the different types of attacks. In social engineering, for example, phishing. In phishing, what is the difference between different social engineering attacks is the medium and the target. So this is the major difference. When you are using the emails to target someone in general public, let's say you are spamming everywhere, someone will click on the link or email and reply back to you and get strapped. From there, you can capture his credentials. For example, you have sent an email 
looking legitimate email from Google, Amazon, any reputed organization, and you send it to someone with the link that your password is going to expire. What is the first reaction of normal human being is going to be? Oh, my password is going to expire. Let's click it. The moment you click it, you will be redirected to fake site where you will be providing your existing credentials and what new password you want to set. From there, attacker got the credentials and you lost the account. If it is bank account, you lost the money. If it is any other account, which is basically maybe it is application account, which is running inside your premises, someone can use those credentials to hack into the system because now he got the authentication. That same authentication is mapped with the authorization. This is the first link in whole attack cycle. You need to have someone's credentials to sabotage into the network or use the vulnerability to come into the network. That is where phishing comes in. If you're using email as an attack medium, this is phishing. And you are not targeting anyone in this one. You can be as general as possible. The next type of attack is spear phishing. Spear phishing and phishing, since the name describes itself, it is almost similar. In spear phishing, what you are doing is you are targeting someone from that organization. For example, there are 100 employees and you notice from the social media or his LinkedIn profile that this is the contacts he is communicating frequently and he can be easily tricked into doing something which he should not. Then you will target him. You will try to be his friend or like you will try to send email from one of his friend account or try to be someone you are not. So you will send him a tricked email. From there, he will not be able to distinguish between actual email and fake email. That is where spare phishing comes in. The concept is same. You are using email as the medium and he is receiving the email. You are tricking him to send you some information or you are tricking him to some website where you are capturing his credentials or you are asking him to download something in the network so you can Come into the network. That is one of the reasons ransomware attacks are very successful because users are not aware that they should not be clicking anywhere. Once they click here and there, they didn't knew that this is a fake site or it's infected site. They didn't trust it their antivirus or their web proxies, and they continued with those websites or use the cracked software. That is when the problem starts. The third type of social engineering is whaling. Whaling in, in this attack, what happens, you are targeting high profile executives in the network. For example, in the company, you will try to profile it first in terms, who is the CEO? Who is their vice president? Who have more influence in the network? Who have right authority to execute that kind of task? This kind of information from where you will get it. You can get it from LinkedIn, you can get it from Facebook, Twitter, on their organization website, about us section. A lot of ways you can get this information. You can even send them an email and ask them who is the right persons to communicate in this department and you will be able to get contact of those guys. The third thing in uh, the whaling, you will be targeting, let's say, CEOs. Okay, you will be pretending to be CEO or vice president and let's say you sent an email to accounts department that you want immediately transfer of $1,000 or whatever amount you want. And because the email came from the CEO, accounts department immediately takes action. Believe it or not, this kind of attack, I have seen it in my career. Many companies lost billions of dollars when this kind of attacks happen because it is more targeted and it looks more legitimate your email signatures, your email address. And it's very hard to look into the emails every time when you receive it as a normal user. When you understand cybersecurity, you will be trying to be more cautious in that. The next type of attack is vision. In this attack, what happens is you are changing the medium. In this attack, you are using your voice call it could be on internet, 
it can be from Skype or Microsoft Teams or Webex, any kind of call. Basically, you are calling to someone and you want any information from them. That is where the problem comes because you want to be helpful. This actually causes the issue. For example, I call you and say, I'm calling you from IT department. Your credentials are going to be expired. Please provide me the credentials so that I can change it for you. Or I can ask you, can you send me your team waiver access or RDP access because I have to troubleshoot your device. It is causing an issue in the network. So there are many ways to manipulate this information. And being a normal user, you will think it out. Oh, if it is from IT department, let's share this whole information. Once you share this information, the attacker gets the access to your machine. He can do anything with that machine. He can escalate the privileges. He can encrypt your device and you will be infected with the ransomware attack. The next attack is smishing. In this attack, what happens is the medium is changed again and we are using SMS as our medium to deliver Ponzi schemes, spam and lottery schemes that you have won $1,000, $100K, that kind of schemes. You receive the messages every day from these guys and it gives you a small link in that, that reply back to this link or send us the money to claim this gift amount, all those things. There are multiple ways to do that. And it usually comes from the names which have the reputation in the market so that it's easier to convince the user that it's from legitimate. And when the user clicks on those links, his mobile gets infected. The hacker gets into the mobile, encrypts it or gets all that information. Believe it or no, Android iOS is vulnerable to this kind of attacks. The third type of attack is farming. In this attack, what happens is we infect the DNS server instead of directly targeting the user. So once the DNS server is infected, for example, he tries to resolve the google.com, what's going to happen? He will not get the actual IP address of Google website. They will be redirected to our website where we can host similar website. It could be a fake website or we can host a malware, which will get installed automatically as a cookie or maybe we redirect him to download something or we can trick him to do something because he will be visiting google.com for him it's legitimate he will not know that his dns server is already infected so this is how the farming attack works once the dns server is infected all the requests will be coming to us we can redirect them we can drop that request or we can redirect them to our own server to capture all the information what he is trying to put. For example, he have to enter username and password on the website. We will have those username and password. This is what happens in farming. The next attack is watering hole. Watering hole attacks are very sophisticated attacks, I will say, because you are profiling the organization and their users' behavior that what kind of websites they are using mostly. And you try to infect those websites, if those are vulnerable, you will be using the exploits to install the malware or redirect them to your website where you will be installing the malware on their sites. This way, you are infecting multiple users from the organization and you can infect everyone in that organization, get the unauthorized access, install the malwares, bypass all the authentication authorization controls and get full access into the network. These are the types of social engineering attacks there are other ways to do the social engineering, but these are not covered under CCNA. We will try to cover it under CEH. Subscribe to the channel so we can cover it in the videos. Now we will try to understand how you can prevent this kind of social engineering attacks. How you can secure the users from this kind of tricks. When it comes to all these email attacks, you should be always looking into email protection solutions. They should be your first priority in the network. There should be web proxy where you will be restricting any kind of URL redirects because these web proxies comes with the it comes with the signatures and visibilities which marks all the links which looks legitimate but those are not. 
with the naked eye it's very hard to find out that if it is legitimate or no the next thing is don't click on any urls in the email always use any sandbox to clean those emails and even remove those urls and put the safe protection links like for example when you are using outlook or office 365 they are basically replacing all these urls with their own urls so that even if someone tries to trick you into redirection they will prevent that kind of issues that is another way of protection third thing is look into the email of what you are receiving because it's very hard to identify with minor difference they can create domains on the internet for example if it is facebook.com and i create another one with just one letter difference with naked eye it's very hard to spot that so what will happen your user will get tricked into thinking they are actually logging into the facebook all right so always look into the domains and even you can use the spf so that no one can spoof the domain you can use reverse dns to ensure the email which you are receiving from other companies it's from legitimate companies it's not someone has not spoofed that email and if you are a techie guy you can even look into the header that from where that header got originated and it is from the legitimate website and you can utilize antivirus and endpoint detection and response solutions you can also utilize ips ideas which have this kind of capabilities to detect if there is any malicious urls in the email these are a few ways how you can prevent this kind of attacks but the best way to prevent these social engineering attacks are you need to give the awareness training to the user you need to train the user and test the user that they really understood what is cyber security yes at the end you are trying to protect something which is weakest in the chain unless you don't train them you don't give them the tools or tricks how to spot this kind of emails they will be always getting trapped into this kind of social engineering what is user awareness is user awareness is you will be telling to the user how to abide by the rules don't share your credentials how to secure your credentials when you have to change your credentials if they see anything which is not compliant to the it policy how they can report it how they can report any incident or if they lose the credentials how they can change it this all part is covered under user awareness this is not a formal training it is more like policies you will be ensuring that these policies are deployed in the network so that you can be secured from this kind of tricks and hacking the next part is user training user training is more advanced in terms you will be giving them hands on training on how to spot this kind of attacks you will be giving them the tools or even you will be demonstrating this kind of attacks for them for example there is kishmi platform is there i was using last time that that's very good we can generate an email for the users which looks exactly like phishing or whaling and farming we try to see the responses of the users how many users actually supported and actually reported it if they have by mistake clicked on the link which is going to redirect them to malicious website they will be spotted and we will give them video training how to spot this kind of emails and next time how to avoid it with this training they will be equipped with the right tools and you need to retest them so that you can be sure they got the right training they have seen the right videos and they have been engaging into the trainings to get the results out the more frequently you will be doing this kind of exercise it will become a habit in their daily life to avoid this kind of mistakes the last part is physical access control all these controls which we have been talking was more into software controls and the physical access control is equally important if someone gets the physical access into the network how are you going to prevent it let's say if someone have unauthorized access to the data center 
he can do anything with that network he can steal the hard drives which have all the data in that he can connect unauthorized link into it for example the dongles or unauthorized internet connectivity to the data center which will give someone else access into the network and they can use sniffing tools in the data center so or they can dummy the assets or database servers where you will be losing everything physical access control is important what kind of physical access controls you should have you should have cctv which will be covering all the places so that there is no hidden spots you can use two factor authentication while coming in you can use their pin or and you can even use fingerprint login to log in and out don't let with the button to go out because someone can be using that one in their favor by like entering by two people coming out as one so don't do that kind of things you can use in and out access which will give you more edge because you know who was in who was out and that's how you can prevent physical access controls there are other ways to do that but for ccna as far as this is concerned you need to know what kind of security threats are there how it can be prevented and with in terms of high level how these attacks works that's it for today if i have increased your knowledge in any ways please hit like and subscribe and hit the bell icon i will be covering ccna np and ie i will see you in the next lecture till that take care